Uh, hey everybody, this is Isaac, and thank you so much for watching this video and uh, taking the time to learn how to play Forge War. Um, I think it's a really rewarding game if you know you, you put in the time and, and figure out what's going on. Uh, so hopefully uh, we can we can do that for you here in this video. Uh, I'm just going to show you how to how to use the user interface for the digital version of the game. So obviously you want to go to the page on my website and then click play the game. Uh, ooh, that's interesting. That's never happened before. Anyway, uh, so the first thing you want to do, usually this is like in the middle, but whatever. Okay, so uh, let's type in your name and click join game. Now normally I'll admit that this lobby is usually empty. Um, this is a multiplayer game and there's no UI, so you have to play against somebody if you want to play the game. Uh, if you're just sitting by yourself and the lobby is empty, then the best way to do that is to just create a game with another account and play with two accounts uh, against yourself. So that's what I've done. I've uh, sort of started a game in another tab and then I can now join that game with the second account and uh, yeah, here we are. Uh, just keep in mind that if it's your first time loading the game, there's a lot of art in the game, and so it might take like a minute or two to load depending on your on your internet connection. Uh, so just be patient, and it, it'll eventually come up. And okay, so now we're both in the game. Uh, there's also before we we start the game, I just also want to point out the simple game button. Um, if you, you can toggle this on and off, and that will toggle the simple game, which is just eight turns, there's no stage two or three, and there's some simplified rules. Uh, we're not going to play too far into the game either way, so I'm just going to turn that off for now. Uh, so we'll have both players join, and then we can start the game. Uh, also, I want to apologize for the screen resolution. I'm using some some janky screen capture software, and it's... I don't know. That's it's the best I got. So ho hopefully it's not too pixelated and and weird looking, and you can follow along with what I'm doing. All right. So I just want to point out a couple of things before we get started. Uh, first, uh, on the right here, we've got uh, the two player tabs that you can click on to look at the status of either player. Uh, you can also look at sort of an overview of their position. Uh, every character starts with two market cards, the Copper Sword and the Copper Dagger, uh, no active quests, and then five adventurers, uh, which you can see by switching over to the quest tab. Here are the adventurers here, market tab, quest tab. Uh, the resources, which you don't start with any, and then you have five quest tokens, seven gold coins, and then six prestige, uh, which is what you start with because of the adventurers you start with. All right. I also notice the purple arrow is telling you whose turn it is. That's good to know. Um, and then let's go down here. Uh, in this white box, you're going to see some text, depending on whether it's your turn. It'll be telling you what you need to do on your turn. Uh, or if it's not your turn, it'll probably just say waiting for others. Uh, there's also another indicator of whose turn it is based down here uh, with another purple arrow. But this also tells you the turn order for the round. Uh, so it's blue and then yellow. Obviously with two players that's kind of obvious. Um, Alright, we got our market cards down here at the bottom. You can scroll over those to get a, a better view of them. Uh, you got your quest cards up here. You got your merchant which you can interact with by clicking on him and then uh, it'll highlight what you can buy or sell from him uh, and then click on him again to close him down. Uh, and then the last thing before you start playing, you also want to take notice of uh, these bonus tiles that are up in the left corner here. Uh, every three turns, one of these bonus tiles is going to get scored, and so it's just you know you want to plan ahead and and uh, plan what what you want to do in the game to to maximize the benefit of these bonus tiles. Uh, so, for instance, at the end of the third round, if you have exactly two workers, then you can immediately make a free overseer movement. So that's just nice if you can pull that off. Uh, okay, so we're going to start by placing overseers in the mine. 
All right, so our initial selection of quest or market cards isn't that exciting, uh, which means we're probably going to start off the game uh, with some heavy copper use. So I think I'm just going to stick my overseer on copper. Uh, every overseer you place down, you'll get a that resource into your supply. All right, now I just got to switch over here and play yellow. Come back, and we're going to do this three times. Get three overseers placed down in the mine before we actually start the official first turn. Um, so just haphazardly throw these guys around. Maybe stick him uh, on the on the emerald. Sure. Okay. And yellow will put there. Okay. Great. So now it's the official start of the game. So uh, I'm going to move an overseer in the mine. That's what it's telling me to do. And also um, you can pass on any of your move by clicking here. Um, that just means you don't want to do that. Uh, that doesn't happen too much in the mine, but you can do it sort of get a better position and turn order. Uh, but anyway, we're going to start by just moving this overseer here and collecting another copper. And then uh, yellow can move along and jump over that guy, get two copper, and then we move on into the market phase. Uh, as you've noticed, like any time I do something, like say I want to buy the wood chopper, and then I click on the confirm button here in order to confirm that. Uh, do I want to buy the wood chopper? No, let's buy a copper spear. Let's cancel that and buy that guy. All right, and then yellow is unimpressed with the market selection. He's just going to pass. Okay, so now we go to the quest phase. Where we're going to pick up quests. Uh, I don't have a whole lot going on here. I did get that spear, which gives me piercing, though, so I think I'm going to take this uh, vampire bats quest and click on that, move that over. Uh, so you'll notice that it starts out red because if I... I'm now in the quest management phase. And so if I just hit confirm here to confirm that I'm done with quest management, then I'm going to fail this quest because I'm not meeting the requirements of it. It requires two power and piercing. So I've got I've to get that on that quest before I finish management. Uh, so I can do that. I can take a level two adventurer. And when I click on him, it immediately moves over to the market card so I can select which market card I want. I'm going to give him the spear by clicking on that and then click on the quest. And so now I've allocated that adventure to that quest. Um, still not enough, but now i got one piercing, so I have to add one more. So we're going to take a level one adventure. And notice with level one adventure, I can't give him the copper spear because he needs to be level two to equip that. Uh, you can see that it's sort of, it's right below the, to the right of the picture there. It's a little hard to read. Probably can't even read it with the uh, the janky video capture. But anyway, it's there. Uh, all spears, axes, and maces require level 2, and all gemmed weapons require level 3. Uh, it's all in the rules. Anyway, so he can equip a copper dagger. We'll click on that. And now we have two piercing. We're good. All right, so now we can confirm. And while he's doing that, the yellow player could have been also doing his uh, quest acquisition and management. Uh, let's see, he just has a bunch of copper. Uh, he'll do Pursue the Mine Bandits. That's a fun quest. And he'll just take a level 1 and give him a copper sword. Great. Okay, now before the turn ends, we get uh, one more opportunity to interact with our market stalls or the merchants. Uh, anything we want to do here. Uh, Yellow doesn't want to do anything. He'll just pass. And then, so to interact with the merchant, right, you just click on him. And then let's say I want to, like, sell the emerald that I got. I don't really need it. I just got it to get more money. So I can click on that, sell emerald, sell emerald, see there. That's what I did, and then I got two money for it. And you can do that any time during your turn, just giving you one last opportunity to do that before the end of the turn. Because you can only do it once per turn. All right, so now I'm done, and we move on to the next turn. Yes. Get new market cards, get new get new market cards, get new quest cards, and I can make another move in the mine. Blue is still first. He'll just uh, jump over that, collect more copper. Can never have too much copper. 
And then yellow is in a bit of a quandary. Can't really, doesn't have a good move. He'll have to jump over his own worker if he wants more than one resource. Uh, let's see here. But he will do so. Why not? So he'll jump like that, and that gives him a nice move for next turn as well. And so he gave a copper to the blue player, but oh well. Uh, now they both have two workers in the mine. Uh, so in the case of a tie, the player order just remains what it was. So blue is still first. Uh, let's see here. Does he want any of these fine weapons? Oh, let's, yeah, Force Warden is nice. Let's pick that up. You have to be level 3 to use this, but he's about to level up one of his adventures, so he might be coming around to that. So let's buy the Forest Warden. Then yellow, I think he's just going to buy another adventure here for three coins. It's always a good purchase. All right, so now we go back to quest management. Uh, let's see here. Uh, investigate kidnappings or hunt the plains goblins. Let's just stick to the easy one for now. I'm not really sure how good I'm doing here. So I just click on another venture. I'm going to give him a copper sword, stick him on that. It's okay, it's no longer red. I just needed one power, but eventually you need four power in, in three turns, so it's better just to add two power now. All right, and he's done with management. Go over here, and let's say that he decides he wants to investigate the kidnappings. He's got another adventurer that he bought, so he can sort of afford to spread himself a little thinner here. Usually when you pick up a big quest, you spread yourself a little thin, but that's part of the fun. All right, so we'll add another copper sword to the mine bandits, and you see now I'm on the second step of that, which requires three power, so... Uh, the last step requires six, so I just stick three copper swords on that. Yeah, it usually finishes that. Then we need two power here, so another copper sword. It's a copper sword bonanza. All right, so I think we're good. Uh, let's see here. So now uh, the quest that we took last turn has now finished because it was only two steps long. Uh, so what we can do with that is now... Uh, level up one of the adventurers on it. I'm going to level up this 2 to level 3 because then he can use that forest warden and then confirm that. You just click on the adventure you want to level up and then confirm. Um, and yeah, I guess we're done. I don't really know these guys want to do any more market interactions, so we'll just move on with life. Uh, okay. So now I'm interested in building a forest warden. So I think I'm going to move this guy to get an emerald. So I don't have any iron, but getting an emerald should be good for now. So he'll confirm that movement. And then yellow gets this big move for a nice one iron and two copper. Uh, of course, that sticks him pretty good, well in last place on turn track since he has four workers and blue only has two. But... He got a lot of resources. Okay, so I could just be a spear collector here and collect the iron spear. Then I'd have all the spears, but that's a little silly. Um, market stall. Turning copper into iron sounds great, because then I can get more iron from my copper and make a forest warden. That sounds like a great plan. I don't quite have enough money. I have four, and it takes five, so I'm going to go over to the merchant. I'm going to sell one of my copper. There, and now I have five. I can buy the market stall. And then I'm going to go over here and you Do I want to use it? Oh, let's take a look at the quest. Yeah, let's use it. And now I have an iron and an emerald. I'm all ready for the forest warden. Okay, now I come over here. And the iron spear is, is always good. And the only reason the other player didn't get it is because he already had a million spears and didn't need another one. But yellow is going to buy an iron spear. All right, so as you can see, it's not Yellow's turn, but even now he can actually start managing his quests even before he goes into quest uh, acquisition uh, just to keep track of, of what's going on. You know, it's just a little easier to be able to manage your quests at any time during the quest phase uh, to sort of plan for what quest you want to do. So he's going to do that now. He's just going to add another copper sword there. 
now he can see, okay, I only have one copper and one iron to mess with in terms of picking up a new quest. But I do have a level two and I have an iron spear, so I'll probably be putting an iron spear on something. He doesn't really need to manage any of his current quests. Blue doesn't, because this quest is still good for another couple turns. Um, but, so he's got a forest warden, he's got a level three adventurer. What exciting shenanigans is he going to get up to? There's not really a good piercing quest out right now. Um, let us go to the Cursed Keep and put a Forest Warden on that. Uh, so we'll eventually need not five power, but four power is a good start for one adventurer. All right, confirm that. And all right, what do we want to stick an iron spear on? Probably Quell the Tavern Brawl. Uh, yes, tell Quell the Tavern Brawl. Put an iron spear on there, it has two power, also has piercing, the brawl doesn't need piercing, but oh well. And then we confirm, and now we finished the Pursue the Mind Bandits quest, which gives us two levels, which we will just allocate to those two guys. That also gives us one of each resource, which is nice, and allows a movement in the mine, a movement of a worker in the mine. So for instance, I can like take this blue worker and stick it here, and then yellow's next move, he'll be able to jump over both those guys, which will be nice. All right, market interactions. I don't think we need to do any of that for now. And so we are done. Uh, also notice that everything that's going on in the game um, is recorded here in this in this log. So you, if you're confused about something, you can always go there. Okay. Um, now that I noticed what just happened here. The other nice thing is that blue has two workers in the mine. It's the end of the third turn, so we're now scoring this tile, this bonus tile. So he gets a bonus overseer movement in the mine, which is really going to mess up yellow, because what he's going to do is he's going to move there, collect some resources, and then we go into the next turn, at which point it is now blue's turn to move again. He's going to move there, Oh, he just created a union. He's got, uh, if you can see that, he had six contiguous workers. All you need is five, and then you remove them from the board. So yellow had his nice move set up, and then blue just ruined it. What a jerk. So now yellow's got not much going on. He's got two level twos, an iron, an iron spear, so I think he's going to grab some iron but it's not really that exciting of a move. Oh, okay, so the game just continues on from here. I think that's a good place to stop. I've sort of demonstrated most of what's, what's going on in the game here. Uh, so thanks for, for watching. I hope it was helpful. And hopefully you're confident enough now to maybe start it up yourself. And then please uh, let me know what you think, you know, in terms of gameplay or or game bugs or anything anything you want to say any feedback you want to give me i'd love to hear it uh you can send me an email you know cephalofair at gmail.com or um any way you want to get in touch with me um it would be great so thanks for watching and uh